Everyone likes a good deal and it is always very satisfying when you manage to buy a piece of silver or gold at a really dirt cheap price. And the best way to do that is often on the second hand market, getting hold of cool and unique pieces at really, really great prices. But it's not without risk. So in today's video, I wanna talk about those risks and how we can mitigate them and yet still buy incredibly cool pieces at great prices. everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for this seventh part of my complete guide to investing and stacking gold and silver. Now in previous parts we've talked about buying online and in person from dealers. Now I want today to talk about buying this stuff on the second hand market because buying directly from a consumer seller is really an advantageous thing to do. You get incredible prices, you can often beat dealer prices by quite considerable margins which is a big thing. But it is fraught with some risk and elements of danger as well. So I want to talk today about my tips, hints and tricks for buying this stuff on the second hand market. What you need to think about, what you need to consider. Please remember this is not financial advice. I just like to buy shiny things and talk about them here on YouTube. So it's a bit of a hit, hints, tips and tricks video from my experiences. We are gonna talk not only about buying online, but buying in person from random people on the internet as well. It is doable, it is possible, but it is risky, and it is something that you should always consider. So lots to get through, and I hope even if you are a seasoned stacker, you'll have a bit of insight from this video, and it'd be great if you do to put a thumbs up on and share your insights down in the comment section, because I know a lot of new and seasoned stackers alike get a lot of value out of that down below. So I'll see you down there for a good fun discussion. So secondhand market, what is the secondary market? Well, basically you can buy a lot of really great things on the secondhand market. And these bars that you see on the table here represent all except this uh, Goddess Europa or all secondary market bars that I've picked up for drastically lower prices than you would from a dealer. Here in the UK, it's even more exacerbated by the price of silver with VAT attached to it, sales tax. Uh, it's ridiculous sometimes, and if you buy a kilo bar, uh, prime example, if you buy a kilo bar right now from a dealer, even a second-hand one that they haven't done on the second-hand margin scheme, you'd be paying you know, eight, 900 pounds for easily, uh, but these are going for about 700, 720 on the Silver Forum, for example. So it does represent a really great opportunity to get some really nice cheap silver at a decent price. Uh, compared with dealers if you are looking to add new things. For me, it's about getting a variety of stuff too because often with dealers you'll find they have your yeah, same old, same old stuff or perhaps they do kilo bars but they basically just have this kind of order uh, set up with metal ore. So if you buy a kilo bar, it's a metal ore bar. It takes a couple of weeks to get to them and then, get, and then it gets to you. Whereas with the secondary market, you'll see a whole host of different things come up. And this eclectic little collection of bars that I've got here, I think speaks volumes about the variety that you can look to get from secondhand markets. Because of course, it's just global. It's just everybody. And you know there are some opportunities out there, definitely not to be missed, that I've seen for good pieces that come up at really dirt cheap premiums, like this beautiful 50 ounce Engelhard. It came up, I can't even remember the price now, but it came up and I did some research on it and I felt it was an absolute steal of a deal, uh, and I really like it, despite the fact it's got a little dent in the corner here, obviously been dropped at some point. Um, you know, it's just representing a great opportunity. But it's not without its dangers and risks. So buying on the second-hand market as opposed to buying from a dealer is going to be an interesting choice for quite a few people. The first thing that I would say to you if you are considering buying some stuff on that second-hand market is consider your own personal security and privacy. When you're buying from a big established bullion dealer, they have of course got their established reputation, their established codes of practice, terms of service, and everything else to factor in and consider. They are ruled and regulated by just general laws around the world. For example, GDPR, personal information data. Uh, if you're buying from Joe Bloggs down the pub, he's not, and that's an interesting, I mean, yeah, him passing over your private details to organise crime to come and rob you, that's probably not against, or that's probably against the law, sorry. Um, but is it going to be trackable? Is it going to be provable? Is it going to be something you can take action against? And it's really not if you ask yourself that question. So buying directly from another person out there is a big thing first up for privacy. So you've got to consider where uh, your details are going to be going, who is going to be getting them, uh, that's probably my biggest thing 
for you to consider. Now, there are ways of relatively anonymizing your payments. You can go through different payment, um, you know, payment providers, but ultimately it's going to be a bit tricky to get a completely anonymous payment going. Uh, you're going to have to do either a bank transfer or a PayPal transfer. Yeah, you could potentially have a PayPal account in like a business name or something, but then is it a business transaction? There are a whole host of different pitfalls when it comes to that. And even then, once you've got that all done, delivery. Delivery is going to be to an address. It's going to be going to somewhere. Now, there are beautiful things called PO boxes that are available here in the UK and abroad in, in the US. They're very popular. I think they're a lot cheaper in the US than they are in the UK. In the UK, you can get PO boxes. I think they're about £290 a year where you can go in and pick them up or £400 or so pounds a year for just automatic redirection to your home address. So it's a secure, uh, private way of being able to receive um, things in the mail, basically. Uh, so it's definitely worth thinking about that. But of course, if you're spending three or four hundred pounds on a PO box address, then, you know, having just one piece of silver delivered there, I mean, a kilo, maybe you, you save you 50, 60 pounds by three or four of them a year. You're probably going to about just break even on your PO box. So it's definitely something to consider with that uh, element. The other side of things is, of course, the, the personal details there. You know, do your research, I think, is probably my best tip for, uh, you know, buying on that secondhand market. If you are uh, buying on places like the forum, the Silver Forum or Instagram and, you know, Facebook, make sure that you're looking at the person, not sort of in detail. You don't do, you need to do a forensic examination of their background, but just see how well established they are. Have they got lots of other trades? Have they done this kind of deal before? Have they got lots of positive reviews and feedback? If you're buying from just some random person that's just put up an advert, uh, that could very easily go wrong. And it's not necessarily just about that one person. I mean, data security is a huge thing at the moment. And if that one person is suddenly splashing over the internet, all of these wonderful you know, precious metal sales listings, um, there is obviously always a potential that they could be, you know, they could be hacked and their personal data could be, or the personal data that they store could be taken away. And that's the same for bullion dealers as well. There's no sort of hiding from that, but at least with the sort of bullion dealers, they have, you know, they have a history, they have a, a requirement under law to sort of look to protect that data better. And they have, of course, the bigger economies of scale and budgets to, to protect it as well. So lots of different things to consider there. Uh, it's always worth thinking about being anonymous uh, when you're buying this stuff because you don't want necessarily Joe Blogs random to come and buy stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I avoid eBay like the plague. Uh, buying precious metals on eBay is, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to put yourself at risk and in danger. Um, you know, if if you're buying on eBay from a big reputable seller, there are big business, you know, big businesses that do that on eBay. Then ask yourself, why are you buying on eBay? Why not just go directly to their website? It'd probably be cheaper directly on their website. And if you're buying from random Joe Public Strangers, um, often you could, I mean, I, I've heard horror stories of basically just basically phishing listings on eBay. You know, you have low, very, very cheap price looking gold or silver. Somebody doesn't buy it now. Then they've got your address and full name. That's not what you want to have from that situation. And yeah, you're protected as an eBay buyer to get your money if that never comes out. But then actually the more valuable thing is the fact that you've got your data sent out to some random person. So that's why I never buy on eBay anymore. It's it's really not very good. Now you can protect that to some extent by having like a business account on eBay with a PO box, but still it's just not quite as good as it could be uh, for my own personal security, so to speak. So um, that's that's kind of the online side of things. There is now the in-person side of things too. Um, perhaps you've uh, met someone and you've sparked up a uh, conversation about silver and gold. They've got some that they potentially want to sell. Perhaps they've inherited something. Uh, perhaps you've seen an advert where somebody's looking for a meetup for that kind of thing. Uh, definitely possible. Uh, definitely theoretically uh, you know, a good way to do business. You can test the bars. You know, of course, buying online from a, a random stranger is, you know, going to be about authenticity of the pieces too that we need to talk about perhaps. So that's going to come in the sort of more testing part of this guide that I'll do. But ultimately, uh, if you are buying from, um, you know, a random person in person, you can at least test that bar in front of them. You can talk through any issues that you've got. But meeting up somebody in person, again, you've got questions there about safety, security issues um, for a lot of people, it can be uh, a really great way of getting really cheap stuff, and uh, it, it is certainly doable, but it does carry that element of risk. Now, certain countries have more elements of risks than others. If you're buying you know, numerous kilo silver bars, for example, there's quite a lot of money involved there, and if you're arranging with somebody to go and meet at some place to buy, 
you know, you've got a question of, you know, being robbed, being mugged, being basically just, I don't know, beaten up and your money taken away. Those are definite things to worry about. Uh, what I would say in terms of, you know, advice for that, I've, I've certainly done some in-person meets before. Uh, if you are looking to meet somebody in person, then try and get hold of some uh, ID from them. If they are a legit seller, if they're happy to kind of do that trade, um, you know, for example, when I when I met the the person who was selling these big 100 ounce bars, in fact, I had five of them at one point uh, a while back, but uh, I I got ID of that person ahead of time, so I knew who I was meeting. We met in a in a public place with lots of people around, but enough privacy that we could go to one side of a car park and be you know, secluded in that sense that nobody can look over, but, you know, exposed enough that there are other people around. Uh, and it is possible. It is easy to do. You can securely do that. There are other great places that you can look to meet, of course, uh, police stations and various other public meeting spaces within formal kind of council areas and buildings and things like that. Um, there are plenty of opportunities for safe trading like that. But again, it's about the privacy of yourself. Uh, you know, if you are walking out to uh, a meet somewhere, walking is potentially a lot better than driving. If you're driving, somebody else could be just watching in the wings, waiting for, um, you know, waiting for that registration number to come along. And then bang, they've got all your personal details. You know, there are plenty of ways by which you can be in danger still. So do factor all of those things in. You know, it's interesting, I ask myself now, would I, would I ever meet up again and buy 500 uh, ounces of silver again, five of these 100 ounce bars in person? Uh, the answer is probably no, uh, I probably wouldn't, just because, you know, you move on in your life and you think to a point, well, there's just no point in putting that risk in there. And often when you're meeting in person rather than meeting or m rather than buying online and having delivered, the only reason really for that, if you've got yourself a PO box and you've got that an anonymity anyway, then the only reason you're doing that is to potentially save on postage costs. And if you're saving maybe 20, 30 quid on a big piece or 10, 15 pounds on a small piece, you've got to ask yourself, is it really worth it? And sometimes it's not. Uh, and that, instead of that sort of last little thought there, whether it's worth it or not, really fills over into what really is worth it compared with buying from a dealer. So as I said right at the start there, privacy, security, uh, making sure that what you're getting is real, all of these factors should be put into one big pot and looked up and see well, how much are you going to save? Because if you get one fake silver bar or one fake gold coin, that's going to demolish your you know, stacking journey. But if you buy from a dealer, you've got that extra layer of security and safety, which is invaluable, it really is. So. The ultimate guide here is, yes, it is possible. Yes, you can get some great deals, and sometimes you can see some incredible prices and deals out there. But be wary, be questioning, always ask what's, you know, what's the motive here? Why would the seller be selling something for a lot less than they could get elsewhere? You know, is there a sense of urgency here? I haven't even talked about the potential for handling stolen goods, for example. So if you've, you know, if you've bought something that somebody's stolen, that could be a potential issue, especially on things like bars like these with serial numbers, which are, of course, individually identifiable. Um, you know, if somebody's got a photo in their stack of KE322660 and reports that stolen, uh, and then it suddenly appears from yourself rather genuinely on a social media platform or on eBay, that could be a little bit sticky. So... Lots of very different things to consider, and I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it down below. So please feel free to comment. I'd love to hear what you think. Even if you are a seasoned stacker, it would be great to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, if you enjoyed our video, put that thumbs up on it and share it around through your social media. If you're not subscribed to our channel, like nearly 70% of all views are, then make sure you hit that subscribe button for future videos. It's free to do. You can just hit that big red button right now. Otherwise, that's it from me. A big thank you to you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.